Okay, now we're going to look at the thermostatic expansion valve. We're going to take it apart and see what's inside it and so on. Uh, thermostatic expansion valve, now this is just some, some of my show and tell stuff, uh, has a power head on it. Now this power head, the, the cap tube's gone on it so it's broke. But uh, everything else I got here is broke too. So on the top of this, it gives me a number and it gives me the refrigerant. Most of them do this. I wouldn't guarantee they're all going to do that. But this power head here is replaceable on this thing. And most of the time, that's about the only thing that ever goes wrong with these. The valves themselves are quite dependable for the most part and uh, last a very long time. This is a Sporlin valve. Okay, I've got high pressure liquid coming in here, low pressure liquid expanding here. This is an equalizer line. The equalizer line goes from the valve to the outlet of the evaporator. These, if there is one here, it must be hooked up. Do not block it off. They are there for a reason, and if they're not hooked up, the valve will hunt like a son of a gun. Hunting means it simply won't settle down. It'll feed too much refrigerant and it'll feed too little. Okay, if we take a look at the inside of this thing. Okay, here we have the valve uh, completely disassembled. The power head here, this uh, diaphragm there moves down when pressure is increased, pushes on these two rods. Now the rods uh, push down and if you look inside you can see the two rods right there on either side of that orifice. Get you a little closer in here maybe we can get a better view. Those two rods push down you can see the orifice right there. This is the valve that fits into the orifice. Uh, I think it looks like it's stainless steel. The orifices don't seem to wear much in this. There's no reason why they really should. This fits on there like that. This goes down here. This little doohickey here goes right there. And you can see this piece here that pushes down on this and comprises a spring pressure. Now, to adjust this valve, you've got this little square on the end. And what that does is increase the spring tension. So it pushes on the spring, which tends to close the valve. So what we have is what we call it is evaporator pressure plus spring pressure against bulb pressure. Okay, what that means is the pressure inside this thing is whatever the evaporator pressure is because it's on the low side of the line and the spring pressure is trying to close it so spring pressure plus evaporating pressure and then this one is pushing the other way and it balances out. It's a modulating valve. Uh, this valve usually is not open or closed it's usually modulating in some way. Uh, here's another one has the uh, uh, power head intact on it. This is an alcohol valve. You can see the bulb here. This bulb has a saturated mix in it. Uh, depending on what type of valve it is, it may have the ty same type of refrigerant that's in the system. This is mounted on the uh, uh, suction line right as it comes out of the evaporator pushes down and like I said with this valve the rods inside there are pushing down 
and the spring pressure and the pressure the evaporator pressure are pushing up so there's a balance there if this one warms if this warms up that'll put more pressure here and will open the valve more if it cools down then it uh, slows down now here's another example of the same type of valve it looks a little different this is an alco but uh, this valve here just has this little plug in the bottom and there's an adjustment in there and you can see there's an allen head inside there and that's for adjusting the spring pressure if you look close you can see the spring inside there I'll pull it out here in a minute you're going to get yourself a little bit of a surprise if you take that cap off with refrigerant system because this is open, wide open to the system. On those other valves, we would never break in the system because we had, let's see, we had this external. And so we would not be breaking in the system. This one, we are actually breaking into the refrigeration system. There's your. Uh, your valve and the orifice is inside there but you can see if you take this cap off the bottom of this you just broke into the refrigeration system so this boy better be uh, pumped down when you decide to take that off or you'll get a pretty nasty surprise here again, the bulb does the same thing as the other one. This one's a little bit different in that this power head on top here is not removable. If that power head fails, then the whole valve has to be replaced. So that's a little on the uh, TXVs. Uh, we'll talk about their uh, how they work in the system and how they adjust uh, a little later.